The remarkable story of Star Tours began much like the epic Star Wars saga itself, with a bold new idea. In the 1970s, Disney's Imagineers came up with plans of creating a new land called Discovery Bay at Disneyland, anchored by an underwater simulator attraction based on Disney's 1954 film, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The whole project was eventually shelved, but the Imagineers continued to advocate the addition of a simulator attraction in the park. In the 1980s, Imagineer Randy Bright consulted with Rediffusion Simulation Limited, a British company that developed aircraft flight simulators for use of their technology. However, an alarming issue arose. People were losing interest in Disney's theme parks. In fact, what were once popular sites for America's youth generations before were now considered old and boring. Disney's parks were losing their immortality. Imagineers Marty Scalar and Tony Baxter noticed that Disneyland in particular was in need of fresh and alluring attractions, and insisted that a creative mind was needed to be brought in from outside the company so the Imagineers could draw new ideas from. That creative mind was quietly waiting in the sun-draped hills of Northern California, in the form of George Lucas. At the time, Lucas had become one of Hollywood's most successful filmmakers by captivating the world with the immensely popular Star Wars series, exactly the type of modern mind Disney needed to help breathe new life into the theme parks. Much like Walt Disney used state-of-the-art technology to entertain the world with his works, George Lucas also pursued advances in technology to further his abilities in storytelling. Lucas, who had personally been a longtime Disney fan, easily accepted the opportunity to work in the parks. The first project he worked on with Disney was Captain EO, a 3D special effects show starring Michael Jackson. It was around that same time that Lucas learned that the Imagineers were working on a new innovative attraction involving flight simulation. Upon inquiring, George uncovered the secret project. The Imagineers were indeed designing a flight simulator ride that was going to replace the outdated Adventure Through Inner Space attraction in Tomorrowland. The catch? They wanted to use Star Wars as the basis for the project. Michael Eisner, who had become CEO in 1984, persuaded Lucas to license his Star Wars and Indiana Jones properties to Disney for creative use in the theme parks. George agreed, and with that, Star Tours was born, along with a new budding relationship between Disney and Lucasfilm. Now that George Lucas had joined the project, development could begin on Star Tours. George and the Imagineering team, led by Tony Baxter and Tom Fitzgerald, created a backstory for Star Tours, which was now based on an intergalactic sightseeing agency that would take space travelers on a high-speed journey across the Star Wars galaxy, where they would be fraught with a climactic confrontation between the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire. Lucas felt that riders needed to be accompanied by a relatable character while on the trip. His idea led to the creation of a robotic pilot named RX-24, aka Rex, who went through all sorts of personality changes during development, beginning first as a witty tour guide, then as a brazen veteran, until finally becoming the inexperienced rookie pilot he came to be known as. Actor Paul Rubens, best known for his character Pee Wee Herman, was selected as the voice of Captain Rex. Actor Anthony Daniels returned to portray C-3PO, who in the attraction is depicted as a Star Tours employee, along with his counterpart R2-D2. Approved with a budget of $30 million, the attraction's building needed to be improved, with the facade being rebuilt and the roof retrofitted to accommodate the new flight simulators. Industrial Light and Magic, Lucasfilm's visual effects division, produced a four and a half minute long ride footage, which was synchronized to the simulator's movements by an Imagineer using a joystick. Richard Bellis was hired to compose the music, including the signature Star Tours chimes. Finally, on January 9, 1987, Star Tours officially opened to the public costing a total of $32 million, nearly twice what all of Disneyland did in 1955. However, the force was strong with this attraction, because Star Tours had become a phenomenal hit. Disneyland reached record attendance numbers with waiting lines stretching as far as the park's main entrance. Fans and guests alike praised the attraction for its technical innovation and audacity in storytelling. Disney had once again found its luster. Over the next five years, the success of Star Tours quickly spread across other Disney parks. Three more attractions eventually opened at Tokyo Disneyland and Disney MGM Studios in 1989 and Disneyland Paris in 1992. 
With that kind of prowess, Star Tours would go on to become embraced as a beloved piece of Disneyana. Star Tours location is architecturally different from one another. The attraction exteriors found in California, Japan, and France are designed primarily with Tomorrowland in mind, whereas the Florida version is based on the forest moon of Endor, complete with an Ewok village and a one-third scale replica of an Imperial At-At Walker. Inside, the first room of the queue is designed as a space terminal featuring audio animatronics of C-3PO, R2-D2, Mon Calamari officers, and a full-size replica of the Star Speeder. Walking further in, guests enter a maintenance area populated by G2 repair droids. Entering the main concourse, guests are directed to their Star Speeder by cast members acting as the flight crew. Upon boarding, the passengers are greeted by an audio-animatronic Rex, who reassures them that the flight will be fine despite his inexperience. Proceeding down the hangar bay, Rex mistakenly turns the ship into an off-limits corridor, where the Star Speeder nearly crashes into a control room. After executing the so-called shortcut, R2-D2 initiates light speed, and the Star Speeder travels to the forest moon of Endor. However, the destination is overshot, and the ship enters a field of comets. Rex weaves his way through the icy caverns of one of the larger comets, until he finds his way out only to come across rebel fighters who are engaging in assault on the Empire's forces. Rex and the passengers join the rebels in their attack, which ends successfully with the destruction of the Death Star. The Star Speeder then jumps to light speed again, returning to the Star Tour spaceport, where the ship nearly collides with a fuel tanker. Rex bids the passengers farewell, and the guests disembark the ride vehicle. The story of Star Tours is a monumental one. In just a few short years, a group of artists managed to craft a thrilling attraction that was just as spellbinding and dazzling as its source material. Eventually, though, all good things must come to an end, and Star Tours was no exception. But its story does not end here. The adventures were yet to continue.